This conference will now be recorded. All right, guys. Good afternoon and welcome to the Clear Lines training session. I am your host, Kip Cohen. It is Tuesday, the 5th of March, 2019, <clears throat> here for the next 60 minutes to go through the Clear Lines uh, indicator running on the Medved Trader platform. Here to answer your questions and assist you, teach you, <laughs> whatever we need to do. Uh, don't have a specific agenda for today. I want to, again, just kind of let this be a, a, a viewer-driven broadcast today if you have specific questions. Um, I do need to fix something because I just, I don't know, I've done this a couple times now. I've accidentally saved over, over, saved over one of my layouts and lost it, and I lo just lost my two-chart layout. I think what happens is I come down and I click, instead of load layout, I click save layout and then click two chart. And then it saves it as my two chart layout. I need to talk to the guys about that because that seems like it's too easy to accidentally click and, and do that. So I got to figure this out. If there's an easy way for me to recover without losing a bunch of stuff. And I don't know if I can do that. Um, or do I just rebuild the two chart layout? Hmm. L layout library. No, we don't want to go to that. We're going to go to load layout. <clears throat> what is my test layout? No. No, 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 no. File load layout. And I don't have anything in backup. Oh, all files. That's what I need. I think that's what I have to do is two chart layout backup. That's it. There is a hide it hidden backup. And then file save layout. Two chart layout. That's what I needed to do. Except I use current day, three minute, month, and I did add, I think I added pivots. No, I added I thought I added average true range. But I squinch it way down there. That way, if you're on the daily chart, then you see the average true range for the day. Okay, so it's file, save layout. Two chart layout. Okay. Hey, I fixed it. <laughs> see, it's that easy. Okay, so, well, that was quick and easy. Um, don't need that one. Don't really need that list. I'm getting too many lists. Any indexes, popper, position. Okay, I don't really need the transportation.
I'm just doing a little cleaning house here because you can start to get a little overly cluttered, just like I got a bunch of, you know, I do have a lot of different layouts, you know, and I know I build them to test them and whatnot. Oh, see, there's the backup. So I could have reloaded the prior day. I guess it automatically backs up. That's all right. Okay, I'm just glad to get that layout back. All right, any questions right now? Anything you guys want me to cover? Anything specific that you're interested in? Please fire away if you have a question. Stock you want to look at. This is the um, this is a layout I, I built that's got level two added into it. for those that want to use level two. So it's one, um, one chart less. No, I take that back. It's just it's a little smaller. No, that's the same, same popper dropper layout with, with uh, level two added. Please look at TVIX and can you draw the Fibonacci for entry points? I can do that. All right, so let, let me go to my normal popper dropper layout. Just because that's easier to work with. And then, so you want to see TVIX. So let's type in TVIX. And then what we need to do is I'm going to blow up one chart full sized. I'm going to go to the 15 minute because that's what we want to draw the first 15 minute. And let's click on Fibonacci retracement and then so we're we're looking obviously the, let me go back to a 3 minute now. So we're looking for actually let me show full day. Here's the current day. So here was the morning run up, pull back, and we're near the lows of TVIX, which also indicates we're near the highs on the market. So TVIX actually had a double bottom earlier at the 127 of the first 15 minutes. Let me get my little highlighter pen out. You'll see there's a right down here. This is one of the reasons why you want to use candles because um, if you were just looking at the red and green lines, all right, since they're not price charts, so you would have thought, okay, well, it only came down to, to the 100 line. Well, reality was the price actually went lower. Now this time it got pretty close with the red and green line, but when you show the price action, you can see that the price action actually went down to the 127. Well, this go around, we missed it. We didn't quite get there. So right, right at 29.05, that, that was the 127, that was support. You also had the 100 line here at 29.23, and we, we bounced back off of it this last go around. That was your, if you were looking for um, your entry, this could have helped you along with utilizing 
obviously the um, the one in three minutes. So let me go back down. Let me go to 100 bars. So you can see on your one minute, well, here, this is just easier. So there's your three. Here's the one. Current day. So there you go. So you can see bottom, bottom, and then your third bottom right here. That's pretty clear. And then you've got volume weighted average price all the way up here at 29.78. Well, we got close, but look where we've been bumping up against the 236 of the first 15. We bumped it several times and failed. This this attempt we couldn't even get there. We got to the 50%. So we're we're struggling now to hit these new high fib, higher Fibonacci levels. Uh, Bruce says, how does the reverse trade work? Could you demonstrate it? I would love to demonstrate that. Thank you. Good question. Was that good for you, Joe? Did, did you have any other questions related to that? Or did that cover everything you needed? Yep, cool. All right, so the the next question has to do with the reverse the trade reversal. So let me find something that's kind of moving nicely right now. Um, what was the one earlier? Um, oh, hold on. Oh, well, C-Trip, that's been kind of a pain in the butt. <laughs> Let's use C-Trip as an example. Oh, it finally rolled over. Of course. Why wouldn't it? Oh, jeez. All right, so let's say I'm just going to pick. I'm going to pick another stock. <laughs> no, I'm not going to use that one. I'm going to pick Vail. Vicky Veil. All right, so let's say we are short Veil. So let's put in, a, I'm only going to do 100 shares short. Okay. So we're in a short position, right? And I can, I'll, I'll flip it and go do a long as well. But we're short right now, and you're like, well, this run is over. I want to turn it and go the opposite direction. So all you have to do is go to trading. And there's a reverse trade button. Or if, like me, I added it to my quick access toolbar. I added that in the flat and trade. You just click it. What it does is confirm reversing. So it's going to turn it and, and flip it from a short to a long. So now you can see we, now we have 100 shares and we're long in uh, Vail. And then if you all of a sudden say, well, heck, I don't really want to be long anymore. I want to be out now. Get me out. Then you can hit the flat and trade, a little fire. Close the position. Get me out. And it exits the trade. So these are great during fast times in the market. You know, when, when you've, let's say you've been long and you hit a top. You want to get out and go the other way, reverse. Or you, you're ready to get out. You don't want to deal with putting in a, having to deal with putting in an order and figuring out where to put it. You just flatten the trade. I love it. It's a great feature. That's it. That's how you use it. <laughs> I don't know what else I could show you. And it's just, it, let me do it with a long. 
Let's do that. Let's take a, a stock that we would be long in. Let's pick another stock. Let's go with Tata Motors. <laughs> All right, so we were long Tata Motors, so let me buy it. All right, long Tata Motors. And let's say I've been up in it and I'm like, oh man, it's starting to roll over. Maybe I should short Tata Motors. <laughs> All right. Hold on a second. There we go. So you can see we're long 100 shares at 1373. But I'm ready to turn it around. Yeah, it, it turns it at the current price. It's basically a market, market out, market in. So what what happens is if I if I say I want to reverse it, then what it does is it covers the short and it covers I mean sells the long, sells the long and then buys uh, and then shorts and turns it short 100 shares. So now we're short 100 shares. Let me let everything finish up there. Minus 100 at 1372. That's it. And then you want to get out, close the position, flatten, and boom. Now we're out. But again, it's market. Market in, market out. Market, market, market. Uh, could you go over how you trade using VWAPs? Yes. So we we use VWAP more for looking at potential price targets. Okay. That's that's how how we use it. So here's here's a couple examples. So let's say Baba, I'm watching it down here, and I say, oh, you know, it's it looks like it wants to make a turn back up. I, I'm thinking about going long Baba down here. I want to buy a little Baba, and I want to know well, what is my risk to reward here? You know, how much can I make, and how much do I have to risk? So, well, if Depending on where you want to put your stop, if you want to be below the low of the day, then the low of the day down, you know, the low of the afternoon is 185.48. So that's about 25 cents from where we are right now. So it's 25 cents. So to figure out what my profit potential is, there's a couple of things we can do. First of all, we, we want to draw the first 15 minute fib level. Whoops, that's not the first 15 minute fib. All right, so let's go to our three minute. So, all right, let me buy, hold on, let me do, let me make this real simple. So, so we're, we're in long Baba, okay, 185.79. So obviously I need to put a stop in, or well, let's do this using let's do this using a bracket order, because this way with a new um, price, uh, uh, the indication of what your risk reward is uh, will help us. So. We're long, so we would need a sell order. We want to sell. All right, so to place our bracket, we got to put one end. So if we want to go below the low of the day, let's call it 185.45, click the mouse. That tells me right now I would lose $17 if I get stopped out. Then I start scrolling up to see what my profit potential. Well, 
the first potential is right here, right? Right at pivot point in the 100 line. I could use that as a potential profit target, or I could use up here, which would be 50 bucks. So risk 17 to make 50 or risk 17 to make 24. They're either one are, are good potentials. I like this up here at 50. So that's where I'm going to set my, my um, bracket order. So by looking at um, a couple different things, we use we use three different indicators to help us figure out potential targets. We use pivot points, we use Fibonacci levels, and we use um, volume weighted average price. When you when you begin to get a confluence of multiple multiple levels, those tend to be strong magnets okay so i can i can guess that if baba were to bounce okay if it were to bounce and it actually is rolling back down so it may not but if it were to bounce from here i've got a couple of potential targets my first one i feel could happen is that pivot point which is next to the 100% fib of the first 15, which is basically the low of the first 15 minutes. That actually is probably a, a realistic level if we weren't rolling over right now. That, that's a realistic target because it, it's, it's a fib level and it's a pivot and it's pivot point, okay? Now, if it gets here and you've got momentum behind the, it, the stock, the market, whatever. The next level, which is even stronger, is right here because you have a confluence of three different levels. We have the 618 of the first 15 minute. We have volume weighted average price. And we have another, we have R1. No, that's not R1. Excuse me. Oh, no, sorry. I was looking at the red line. That's my target. R1's all the way up here. Sorry, we only have two levels. So we have two levels here and two levels here. So it's confluence of either pivot in the 100 or VWAP and the 618. But both of them are good potential targets. Even at here, I'm still making decent money. I make better money here, but I still make decent money here. I think I just got hit. Yeah, I just got taken out. So, obviously, Baba rolled over. But that's how you use VWAP. That's how I use VWAP. I use it strictly as a, a tool to help me find potential profit, points to take profit. Or points to enter a trade. If it gets to VWAP, if it's up close to it and then starts to roll over, that could be a place to short it. Or if it bounces off to get to go long. So there, I just, again, points of reference, that's all. Just like on hog, hog right now, if it would roll over, it has VWAP and R2. Now I need to draw the FIB levels also to see if we have confluence of Fibonacci, which I don't think we're going to. Actually, hold on, it's easier. I just on this chart go to the 15 and then click Fibonacci 
See, this is such a small first 15 minute. We didn't, we're, we've already broken above it, so that doesn't even work. So now you have to go to the first 30, which that doesn't work because that's still inside. Then you have to go to the 60. You have to start expanding to try to find these levels. So the first 60, there you go. Now you've got something to work from. That doesn't even look right. No, that looks right. So look where we've been bouncing off of. We've been bouncing off of the 1618 of that first 60 minute of that first hour. We, we hit it and bounced, hit it and bounced. We keep bouncing off of it. And we've, we, now we're kind of, we've been in this little R3 slash 1618 this is why it hasn't rolled over or broken down because it's stuck in this muck. I mean, it re actually ran up earlier and then came back down. And then we went into this range between the, the pivot point and the fib level. And then if it rolls over, there, there are some potential targets, first one being VWAP and the 14140. If it gets through that, you've got R2 and the 127. Don't think it's going to get there, but it could. Just use them as points of reference. That's all you want to use them for, points of reference. Points of reference to help you find potential places to um, take profit, look for entry points in conjunction with your red and green lines and using your clear lines and using money management. Wayne says, how do you set up reverse? Well, it's already there. If you go to trading, it's right here. If you want to add it to your quick access toolbar, you just right click, oops, you just right click and you'll click add to quick access toolbar. So you've already got it though. Go to trading and then over in this actions, reverse. I don't think, I think that's the only two places that it's, you can access it from is either right here under trading or if you add it to the quick access, I don't think you can right click. It's not, you know, like up here you have the buy and sell buttons. There's not a, um, now if I click trade and open a trade ticket, no, nope, they don't have it on the trade ticket. It's only on the, um, it's only on, on the chart trader right here, or if you add it to your quick access toolbar. Uh, Wayne says, can you explain VWAP? So it's just, it's just another technical indicator, but it, it is, and I want to give you the, I want to read you the appropriate definition. It's volume weighted average price. I don't know the formula. Um, that actually goes into it. But here, let's. Uh, this is from Investopedia. Uh, volume weighted average price is a trading benchmark used by traders. It gives the average price a security has traded at throughout the day based on both volume and price. It is important because it provides a trader with insight into both the trend and the value of the security. Uh, volume weighted average price appears as a single line on an intraday chart. 
similar to what a moving average looks like. A rising VWAP and or price above VWAP means the price is likely to likely in an uptrend. A declining VWAP and or price below the, the VWAP means the price is likely in a downtrend. Don't rely on VWAP exclusively to determine the trend since it's only showing a historical average and not what is happening currently in, in the or in the future. Um, investors may use VWAP to assess the price they paid for security throughout the day. At the end of the day, if the price they bought it at is higher than the VWAP, then they have overpaid. If the price, if, if it is less than VWAP, then they purchase shares at a good price. And then the formula, this is the formula. So it, um, hold on. I saw the formula just a second ago. It's number of shares bought by price divided by total shares bought. And um, actually, Lindsay, his son, Lindsay, the Medicaid kid, Lindsay's son um, is the one that actually brought it to our attention. Kevin Perry brought it to our attention as a good indicator. And we found that price does tend to gravitate back towards that volume weighted average price at some point. I mean, you'll, you'll see how it kind of, crisscrosses the the VWAP. So, you know, again, if you're shorting off tops, you can use it as a profit target going down. If you're going long off a bottom, you can use it as a profit target going up because, again, price tends to gravitate back towards the volume weighted average price. <laughs> Thank you, Wayne. I appreciate it. He says, got it, you're the man. And yeah, red and green lines and kip arrows. That's right. Got to use those red and green lines and the kip arrows. So Frank has a good question. How can I use the clear, clear lines to help me get out of a successful long-term trade? What can I look for? You know, I'm currently using four chart, two minute, 10 minute, one day and one week. So give me an example, Frank, of a stock you'd, you, you would you want me to evaluate for you. Give me one stock that you're in. And then we'll AMD. Okay. So I, you really don't need to, to, to look at the intraday. for what you're doing. I mean, except for your timing, your en entries intraday for a position trade, if you're just trying to get a good spot. So we're just gonna go to a historical <clears throat> and I'm gonna remove the, the uh, remove the uh, candlesticks. All right, so this is a 50 period, 50 period monthly chart. So it's 50 months. This goes back to January 2015. If I want to look further back, I can go to 100 periods or 200 periods. You know, so I, I mean, I could look all the way back to however far I want to go, or I can scroll back to the beginning of data, you know, and see all the tops and bottoms. Just depends on what, what you know how much information you want to see. So if you're in a long-term position trade, I would be watching only two time frames closely, the long-term and the midterm. Th that's going to tell you when the trend changes, the long and the mid. So right now, you're still long-term wise, you're still uptrending. Red line's pointing up, green line's pointing up. You just got a, a, a green arrow up at arrow last month. Uh, 
Uh, then I go to the weekly. And I'm like, all right, well, what's going on in the week? And on the weekly, I might want to go further back. So, you know, here's AMD back in 15 and 16, and then it starts picking up momentum. Went sideways for a little while, and then boom, big move up, big pullback. And now we're just beginning a slight pullback on the weekly. So this right here is an indication with the fresh red week. You're not going to sell on a fresh red week if you're in a long-term position trade, right? Because look how many times it goes red on the week. It's gone red, it's gone red, 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 pullback, red, pullback, red, pullback, red, pullback, and then rip, red, pullback, and then rip. My, my suggestion would be when the long and the mid both go curve up, over, and down, that's the end of a trend. Now, we, we, we never know how long that end is going to be. Sometimes the end of the trend is short-lived. It pulls back a little bit and then takes off again. Sometimes it pulls back and then bounces and pulls back and pull, you know, so it's, it's hard to know the, the thing you have to also consider is how much profit do you have and how much of it are you willing to give up? I, I think it's important as an investor, not, just a trader, but an investor, you, you have to draw the line in the sand at some point and say, okay, I'm not willing to give back more than X amount. Or if I'm up 40%, then my worst case is I'm only willing to give back 10 of that, of that 40. And if it comes back down, I'm out and I still made 30%. Because remember, you can always get back in, especially if it continues down, if the charts are, are strong. So you're, you're going to use a combination of interpretation based on what you see in the charts. How strong is the reversal? Is it heavy volume or light volume on the reversal? You'll see that in the weekly chart, right? See, this ran up on heavy volume. It pulled back on lighter volume. Now that run up was a continuation on lighter volume. So what's happening, you'll notice, look how it's turned red, but look how low the volume is down here at the bottom. See how the volume's decreasing? So we're getting a slight pullback on decreasing volume. I wouldn't worry too much about a slight pullback on decreasing volume. I would be most concerned about strong pullbacks on heavy volume. That's indication of a strong sell-off. And has, have we seen that on this on a weekly basis? You got to go back. You saw some strong sell-offs on a weekly basis. For the most part, this stock has been in a pretty good range. It's been very range bound. And you're you're near the upper end of that that range, right? You gotta look at that too. So what's my up potential here? And you had a double top there at between thirty eight and forty. And then we just topped out in the 20s or right around th actually it was 34 well so the long chart frank that is the long and month are the same monthly chart is considered the long-term trend weekly chart is your midterm daily is your short term when you're when you're comparing to the old wise trade way Day is short term, week is midterm, month is long term. Don't worry about quarterly or, or yearly. I mean, you can look at those, but those are yearly charts and quarterly charts. We don't ever really evaluate on that. We look at a, a monthly, a weekly, and a daily. And you could toggle back and forth. 
you should be using the monthly and the the, the monthly and the weekly for your evaluation. I mean, you still want to look at the day because the day is the crystal ball into what's going on on the week. They all build upon each other. The, the, the day builds the week, the week builds the month. So like, you know, looking at AMD here, well, I can see, yeah, it's been on a run up since the beginning of the year. I'm still at, it, I, don't, I don't see anything on the day that scares me. Look at the the volume on the daily chart. We're consolidating, right? Th this is a consolidation here as it pulls back. We're consolidating on decreasing volume. If we were con con consolidating on uh, increasing volume on a daily basis, that's where you're going to be concerned. That's where you might be headed for a pretty good trend reversal. But yes, mild mild pullbacks are going to happen uh, as the stock's trending up. Now, obviously, you can't predict things like earnings and news that could, like today on GE, you know, the CEO came out today and basically said that whatever it was we're not gonna what was it he said uh, it says industrial free cash flow will be negative in 2019 all right well that took a dink on GE today I mean it's only down four percent whoops but you know, and the volume is not really horrible today. So you kind of have to look at the big picture. You have to look at the, you have to evaluate the trend across the board and then determine your plan of action. It's, it is subjective, you know, because there are so many factors where you got in, how much you're up, how much you're willing to give back. And I can't tell you what the magic, you know, where you, you know, I can't give you the answer to those questions. That's only something, you know, when you're developing your own trading plan, you have to kind of set your own rules. And that's where things like, all right, if I'm up 10% in a position, I move my stop to break even. If I get up 20%, I move my stop to 10%. If I get up 30%, I move my stop to 15%, you know, or whatever. If the long and the mid go up, over, and down, I'm out. I'm just making, you know, I'm just making conversation here. I don't know if that's the, your plan or not. There's not a, a set answer. when trying to figure out, you know, where, uh, when to get out. Because there's too many mitigating factors. It also depends on, you know, your overall portfolio too. I mean, you might have a couple of stocks in your portfolio that are off a little bit, but you've got a bunch that are up a lot. So if the charts are kind of on the bubble, you might stay a little bit longer.
Um, the olden days, I never had to look at those stocks that had green lights. Here it seems to be one stock at a time. Yeah, I mean, you still, it, it's a little further additional step because, you know, I mean, Wise Trade was limited to the 15 stocks. And yes, you could just scroll through and quickly, but you can do that with this by, I mean, all you have to do is put in your, your watch list of whatever stock you want to look at and then just have your have your long mid and short term trend or that's what I would do. I would have one one layout of with three charts, long, mid and short when you're doing quick evaluation and then you just quickly zip, you know, go through the long, mid and short. Here, like here, let, I'll show you real quick. I'll build one. I'm going to use the two chart layout. I'm going to build a, where did my two chart layout go? How did I screw that up again? Oh, it's this one. Oh, I need to do, hold on, save layout. Okay. Hold on. Let me let me try that again. Two chart. Okay. There it is. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to build one to show you real quick. We're going to take away the 3 minute. We're going to go to main new chart same as this one so here's what i'm going to do i'm going to do it like this i'm going to go that like that that like that i'm going to do day week and then view New chart, same as this. Actually, I'm going to do it like this. Hold on, let me think about this. That's kind of cool. I think I like that. So this is a save layout. This is long, mid, and short term trends. Long, mid, and short term trends. So long on the top, short, mid. So now all I have to do is I can just go through, pink, pink, and I can quickly look at long, mid, and short. I mean, that's basically what you did with Wise Trade. I mean, you, can't, you, can't, you could never rely just on looking at the green and red lights. You always had to look behind the lights to see what the charts gave you. But I think this, this is a pretty clear picture, you know? And you can quickly go through 20, 30 stocks, 40 stocks, just by. Did that look, does that look good for you, Frank? You like that layout?
Okay. Let me know if you need help. It's pretty easy to build it. You saw how I did that, right? <laughs> Wayne says, I'm in TQQQ and it's working. <laughs> Gave up watching Vince Gill on AXS TV for you. He's good too. He probably doesn't help you make money though, does he? That's my guess, at least. <laughs> Thanks, Wayne. Yeah, I like this. And then what you could do, what I was going to do is you could also put a minute in here. You know, if you wanted to put a, I could do a um, intraday chart and just slide it in over here in this corner. Then I could have like a 10 minute or whatever. I'll watch, you know, then you could have a, so, something to this effect if you needed one in, intraday chart. But that'll give you that'll give you a pretty quick view of of the trend. It's a nice move up on TQQ today. That's the nice move up. Good stuff, guys. All right, we just got a few minutes to go. This this hour is flown by quick. Looks like the market's going to end up a little bit to the green today. Any other questions for me? <laughs> We're the best and there's the rest. Nope, no more questions. All right, that's it, guys. Uh, we'll see some of you guys tomorrow in the webinar. And the rest of you, uh, you're welcome to join me back here on Thursday. Um, this session is recorded 
if you go to equity-alerts.com, uh, you click on the YouTube link, that'll take you to our YouTube page where I post the Clear Lines training sessions with a description, usually, of, of what we covered. Uh, if you have any questions about Clear Lines or are interested, if you're not currently subscribing and would like to subscribe, um, I've got some information here on the website at equity-alerts.com. You can subscribe on that page as well on the Clear Lines tab. And you're always welcome to give me a call or email me at kip at equity-alerts.com. Happy to answer any questions you might have, help you through the process. Um, if you're if you're not currently subscribing to the indicator and you're interested, um, I do provide some one-on-one uh, -on -one assistance getting it set up for you. We'll remote connect into your computer. We'll assist you with uh, building a, a layout for you and kind of step you through the kind of some of the buttons and how to use it, and we'll customize it for your liking. I, I do provide ongoing support as well. Um, yeah, I don't think you see, you'll see them, Frank. I think I don't think you see other people's. Um, anyway, uh, I provide this twice weekly training session uh, and again, one-on-one -on -one assistance if needed. You can always reach me by text, email, phone, whatever. And uh, that's it for me. Have a great afternoon and I'll see some of you guys tomorrow. Night all.